Federalism ends in ISM. On its face, it makes it an ism in the same category as socialism, communism, fascism, and liberalism. However, my view is that it is quite distinct from these classic isms. They are all typically put forward by their advocates as universally applicable. In other words, as the best regime to be adopted any, everywhere and anywhere. Even the most ardent Federalist would not present Federalism in this manner. Federalism is all about context, an approach to governance that may be applicable in certain countries given their physical geography, population size, and internal makeup in terms of language, religion, ethnicity, and other factors. Thus, those who see merit in federalism would still not suggest it be applied in every country, or even in most countries. Those countries that call themselves federal, or are usually considered federal, are, of course, marked by enormous variation in their institutional arrangements. This variety of federal systems and the apparent overlap with some decentralized unitary systems raises the issue of whether federalism has enough of a substantive core to merit any standing as a distinctive approach to structuring political systems. I believe it does. The essence of federalism is a regime which has at least two orders of government, each, of which, each with a direct relationship to its electorate, in each having some genuine political and constitutional independence from the other. This means that some so-called federal regimes, such as present-day Venezuela, have only a tenuous claim to be called federal, and that some regimes that do not call themselves so, and here I would include Spain, probably do qualify. Some would say Italy does as well. I recognize that Spain has some non-federal features but so does India, which clearly has accepted it as federal, and so do Canada, the United States, and Australia. Language is always slippery, but I think the application of the term federal to a particular case must always include some elements of both constitutional and political judgment. It must avoid a rigid, ideal definition of federalism under which perhaps no country would fully qualify. However, at the end of the day, the application of the term to a particular country is a matter of judgment. So what then are we to conclude about whether Spain is a multinational federation in disguise? The original constitution of 1978 clearly avoided the label and set out to establish a devolved union rather than a federation. However, if we accept the definition of federations, the broad definition that I have outlined earlier, and examine the development of the constitution and governmental practice of the Estado de las Autonomias, as it has evolved over the past 30 years. It would seem that under the pressures of a multinational society, a compound nation, a compound nation of nations, Spain has come to exhibit the basic structures and processes typical of federations. Some of its features, like the use of statutes of autonomy and the form of asymmetry, are unique. But as I have noted, there is no single pure model but rather a wide range of different specific arrangements implementing the basic features of federations elsewhere. While critics may point in Spain to the weaknesses of the Senate and the reliance instead upon political parties for regional influences in central policy making and to deficiencies in intergovernmental relations, <coughs> nevertheless, in functional terms, the Spanish political processes, as they have evolved, meet all six of the basic criteria of a federation. Thus, I would conclude that Spain has become a federation in practice, if not in name. At this point, however, I want to emphasize that we should not be preoccupied with or mesmerized by labels. Particular labels are useful only if they help us to understand how a political system actually operates. In this respect, what is important is not whether the label Federation is applicable now to Spain, but what are the significant features of the Estado de las Autonomías as they have evolved, and how effectively are these meeting the needs and requirements of Spanish society. In that respect, it would appear that Spain may benefit from comparisons with the experience of Federations elsewhere, but also the federations elsewhere 
can learn much from the operation of the distinctive features of the Spanish case. After 30 years of constitutional practice and negotiated agreements leading to decentralization and federalization, Spain, like most federations, is still faced with the continuing challenge of how to integrate rather than assimilate its compound identities and of adapting to changing political and economic circumstances. But federations are not static, but rather dynamic structures. And this too is a feature which Spain shares with federations elsewhere. Thank you.